So, here's the next build. My uh, Enterprise E, as you can see, I've already removed it from the trees. I've actually already gotten rid of all the all the little nubs and what have you left over from the, the trees and I've already sanded all this down ready for paint and I've took a black sharpie and I highlighted all the areas uh, all the phaser banks and the one thing I found that I never realized this about this ship is this thing only has phasers on the saucer section like all the older enterprises the D was just bristling with uh, phaser banks all over the primary and secondary hull but I cannot find anything on here. I know there's a photon launcher somewhere on here but yeah I couldn't find anything and uh, I kinda like this this is the uh, this is the deflector array and I actually added the detail up here Let's see if I can show this that's actually the captain's yacht in there I kinda like how they added that, uh, that little detail they actually you can kind of see a little in the cells that are on the side but yeah so this is all ready for paint. I have to still have to wash that, but these are all ready to go. And uh, the, the, yeah, the reason I darkened this in with a sharpie is because I'm just going to paint a light, a very light gray, and a light coat of that. So after they're painted on, these will be will look like a darker gray. So I don't have to uh, try to paint them that darker gray after uh, after I assemble it. It's always kind of annoying, especially when they're so thin and such but yeah and these are around the impulse engines they're gray I've kind of decided midway through that that I'd actually just you know paint it after I did a couple of coats of clear or well matte and then I just mask it and paint it anyways so I'm gonna be assembling leaving the saucer section in two halves and painting those separately and actually just assembling all this and kind of painting that as a unit because it does have a uh, where did it go? Uh, it does have a base stand here, so I can just take a sprue and kind of create a temporary base while I'm painting it. Put it up on there, you know, something that I can lift up and turn to paint underneath and get all get it all at once instead of painting this all separately. So. That's pretty much uh, where I'm at with this. I'll uh, update as I get further along. So I'll uh, see you then. Uh, quick little tack on something I forgot to talk about just a few seconds ago. When I first looked at the decals for this, I wasn't really impressed. I didn't, well, I'd been doing the D, and those decals are just awesome. And I looked at these, and I thought these were pretty much a step back. And I didn't realize how much of the ship is actually decaled. And there's only. Uh, there's only two sheets in here, but this cover is pretty much the whole ship. And I didn't realize that when I was looking at them the first time. So quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of detail in the uh, decals here. You can see the uh, model here, and uh, so yet this is all pretty much covered except for the in between here and here, and the, the whole most of this is covered here. As you can see, this guy went back in with a little tiny sharpie colored blackened in the window I'll probably do the same thing so yeah um I was kind of disappointed by these but then I took a look at the box and took a look at the ship and the instructions and uh, well yeah maybe this will look uh, a lot better than I thought it would so there's that here we are with an update as you can see I've got the engineering hull assembled I also got a base a little base but not a big model so Kind of fits. I have to stain this a little darker, so I'll stain it brown. Not sure where this came from, but yeah. So I finished the assembly on the uh, engineering hall, and I actually think it looks pretty cool, just like that. They never had a separation saucer separation in the movies, which I think would be pretty cool if they would have. Looks kind of neat like this. But anyways, you have to uh, assemble pretty much all this at once. I mean, you don't have to assemble the engines, but you have to assemble the two halves of the hull. This and this all at the same time. Which is not really a big problem. I got a little glue on it that I've been sanding off. I've also been filling some gaps here. 
you can see there's a pretty gap, a pretty big gap right there that uh, needs to still. I filled it a little yesterday, and I'll be filling it again, letting it dry. That side's not so bad, but yep, just need to fill that in. And I've sanded it down. I've sanded some of the oopsies with the glue off, and it's ready for. Uh, will be ready for paint in a little bit here, but that's all. Uh, so far that is. Haven't done anything with the saucer section yet because I'm just gonna paint those separately. So uh, that's that. More later. So an update on the uh, E here. As you can see, I've applied uh, the uh, paint and those lines, the phaser banks, showed up quite well. I just put a light coat of paint on it so that those would pop. So I got those painted and I've got a couple of coats of matte on those. Same thing with the engineering section here. I had some matte on that. I still have to paint the top section of this. I couldn't really create something for that so I just eh, paint one side, paint the other. And I finished the uh, base here. Well, I finished staining the base. All I did was basically a wash. Just use some of this airbrush paint which has a bunch of uh, it's already mixed up, so it's already thinned, so it, you, can use, you can use this as a wash. And that's all I did. It already had wood grain in it, so I just brushed it on here. So it darkened the dark areas, and looks pretty nice. And then I just brushed on a coat of matte. It looks fine. Now I have to uh, figure out where I'm going to drill the hole, because I want the ship to be centered to the base. And... The hole in here is not exactly centered to the ship. It would be more like up here. So I have to basically assemble this and figure out where to probably somewhere in here put that hole. And that's about it. I got one more coat of uh, matte I want to put on here. And then I'm going to start decaling it. As you can see, I've got the saucer section here painted. I didn't like the gray, how dark it was, so I painted it pearlized white and it kind of came out more like this which is gray uh, the pearlized white wasn't white it was just more of a almost a metal flake kind of effect it's not not really pearl per se uh, let's see is this it yeah this is it it's this not pearl white as much as just kind of this metal flake effect which is actually kind of neat. I want to do the NX-01 and I'm thinking that this would make it really cool. I don't think it's coming through as good on the camera but in person it pretty much is the color of the NX-01. So what I'm going to do is actually spray over this with a little white, a nice light coat of white and uh, Spectre White which is Badger's brand of paint. Now, what's cool on this pearlized paint is, you look at the back, and it says, operate at 40 to 50 PSI. Badger, a company that makes airbrushes, has nothing about which PSI you're supposed to spray it at. And I've sprayed it usually between 20, 25, I'm going to go up. The reason being is I really have no problem with Spectre paints, or Spectra. Except for the white. That I don't know if it was a bad batch of white, or if white is just horrible no matter what I did, no matter how much reducer I add to it, it would clump, it would tip dry instantly. I'm hoping I just got a bad batch with my other one, this is, and that this actually sprays good. But yeah, you'd think a company that makes airbrushes, Badger, would put on their bottle what PSI you should spray their airbrush specific paint at, but I guess that wasn't important to them for some reason. Odd, but yeah, so when I do my NX-101, I really have to uh, save some of this paint for it because this is exactly the color I want for that. I uh, went back and highlighted the uh, phaser bands again because they were kind of, kind of got lost 
in the pearlized paint, so I just went back in with a sharpie and redid them. The uh, engineering section is right there in the light, getting dry from the pearlized paint, so I'll be doing that in a moment. Well, tomorrow, because I want it to dry. Uh, this stuff, not yeah, this stuff dries pretty fast. It just says on here, cure with heat, which is vaguish, but I'm guessing that means it cures very quickly, question mark, cure with heat. So I'm just going to be playing it safe and just leave it there for a day. And uh, that's all for now. I'll come up with an update uh, when I'm done with the paint. Just got done spraying the Spectre White. I don't know how well you can see this. I might want my camera to show or maybe there. Yeah, you can see it went on kind of crappy, kind of speckly, kind of spotted. It sucks. And there's, uh, I don't know if I can even show it off here. There's little, little pieces of paint, little tiny specks of paint that flew out with it. And there. Yeah, you can see, you know, going out of focus, but yeah, it just flies out of it. Yeah, it just goes on horribly. Uh, so it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not the PSI. Uh, I know I'm spraying it like 40s PSI. No, well, you're spraying too high. Well, no, actually. Um, doesn't matter. Every time I spray with this paint, with the old batch, this is exactly what I got. Pretty much it is speckly, spotted. Uh, the gun just, pssst, 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 and you can hear, you can hear it stop spraying. And it doesn't spray at any consistency. And I have used this multiple times. I used this on another ship on my C, and it did the same thing. The paint looks pretty bad on the ship. But, um, text. Um, oh, I did put this on really tight. After I got this, I went back to the paint and said, okay, what the heck's going on? Let's see if I can do some hand magic here and get my old needle. There we go. This paint inside here is cream cheese. It shouldn't stand up like that. It is, you can see it's pulling up there's look at that. That is the paint. It's non-reduced paint. It's just acrylic paint and a little bit of reducer. I don't know why they mix it like this. But you, yeah, you can see it. When I get it into a big chunk, it almost lifts up. Yeah, and I shook this for a good five minutes. I shook the ever-living snot out of this. And what, what, what went in my color cup looked, well, it looked like that right there. Nice and thin-looking, normal airbrush paint. But it had some little globs of um, acrylic in it and it sprays horribly so I'm never gonna be buying Inspector White I'm probably gonna I'm not gonna toss this I'm going to somehow get it out of here and I am going to um, reduce it myself I'll be using you know with water or with uh, some something else I might even just buy a reducer because this, this sucks. So, some more adventures in paint. <clears throat> I emptied the bottle of Spectre into here, and all I got was pretty much reducer. As it's, maybe you can see, whatever this is, it ain't coming out. I got a little on a brush here, or on a stir stick that I borrowed permanently from Dunn Brothers. I don't know if you, the uh, camera will pick up the texture that's on this, but it's, yeah, the horrible, horrible texture on that paint. And let's see if uh, you can show this, but it's rather sticky. I took some nice Liquitex, high viscosity acrylic, and put that over here as kind of to show you. This is paint. This is non-reduced paint and as you can see this is what paint should do see 
That's paint. This, I don't know what this is. It's the blob in a can, or a plastic bottle. So, to be fair to Badger and Spectra Techs, I'm just going to assume that they had this paint shoved in the back for years, and it just lost it. As you can see here, I've got the reducer, and if I pour the reducer out, which you can't see, now you can, pour the reducer out, you can see the leftover paint in there that gets nice and stuck in the tip of your airbrush in two seconds flat. I mean, I've never, I've never had any luck with this paint. So that's that. Fun with paint. Um, as far as the ship, I have sanded. I got it relatively smooth. I redetailed the phaser banks. I did do these in marker this time. And then of course down here. I did the same. And I added I'm sure there's decals that go over these black sparts spurts, spart parts, stuff, these things, and these. And I didn't even really look at this or notice this, but these are triangles are based on the original series Enterprise when where it had triangles like this landing gear is what everyone calls them on the saucer, but they were right here and facing outward, but I thought that was a nice little nod. Every time I look at the details on this ship, I start to kind of like it a little bit more. Uh, so that's where I'm at. The uh, engineering section is still up there. It still looks like silver. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to mix down this nice Liquitex acrylic here and see if I can't get a good paint as opposed to whatever this is. I'm sure I could probably use this for a filler putty. I No. I don't I don't know. This is <laughs> That's that. So more later. Alright, little update on the decaling. I'm finally to it. <clears throat> I always like decaling. It's always towards the end, I guess. And uh as you can see, the saucer section, at least the upper saucer section, is complete. I still have the uh secondary hull and the lower section too. I just completed this. I have to say these decals are really nice. Um, I made a few mistakes, like when you can see right here. I didn't realize that uh, this little gray bit in here was actually to cover the phaser bank. As you can see, it nothing lines up in here. Oops. I also had a mistake, as you can see right there. There's an overlap there. But other than that, I think I got it pretty good. Uh, these decals do conform very well to the surfaces. And well, you can see, yeah, you can kind of see that how well the panel lines there are actually sticking out. And that's one, well, actually, that's two decals. You can see where they overlap in the center there, but yeah. Um, and you can see all the windows are popping out there and there and all along the side of the hull. So the decals went on very well. And they're very easy to conform to this to uh to panels and such. Um, I didn't use anything but water, and that was it. Just water and a Q-tip, and in some places a toothpick, which I used to kind of highlight the panel lines again very carefully. So yeah, these are really cool decals, and um, gonna be moving on to the. Uh, underside of the saucer now. So just a little update here on how that saucer is going. It looks really good, I think. So, uh, more later. A little update here. I'm almost done with the uh, decals. I've already got the uh, clear lacquer on the upper and the lower saucer sections here. I think they turned out pretty good. Look pretty nice. And again, all these decals have set down fairly well. Um, the only problem I really had is on the uh, this here. Put these off to the side. And it wasn't... I mean, all these set down nice. Um, and uh, 
this bottom has already sprayed with uh, uh, lacquer. I have to spray the top now with a clear lacquer. The only problem I really had was with the uh, the nacelles. They were this is one big piece. It's kind of hard to fit it all in there, but it fit in there nice and actually sat down so well. I don't know if you can see this that you can see the ridges on a little black there. You can see the uh, the ridges. It sat down nice. Not only did it sit down nice in there, but it sat down nice enough for you to see those little louvers or whatever they are. So it sat down nice, it just I didn't line them up very well. You can see that these are actually two separate decals, one for each side and uh they uh see the blue, they didn't line up so well. I got better on this side. It's pretty lined up. Lined up at the top, but then you have to also line it up at the side. That's not actually all the way in the groove where it should be. So, and I ripped off the RTS raster decal back there accidentally on this side. But the reason I'm making this video is not only for an update, but <laughs> so the last decals I'm doing are here. They're the pendants and then the uh, the USS Enterprise 1701D or E rather. And this pendant, I don't know if I could zoom it in here closer. Hold it steady enough. My it's all messed up. There we go. Planets of Federation United Enterprise U SSU Starship. It's backwards. And this is the right side, by the way. This is the side that adheres. It, it, this is the right side. Now, the in, inboard, inbound sticker, because there's uh, flag or uh, pendants that go on either side. There is a specific side they go on. I thought I had this on the wrong side, but if I put this, which is its counterpart, 67, which I look here and yep, 68 and 67 go on this starboard. Right there in the instructions there, 68 and 67 go on the starboard side. Right there. Not only is this backwards, but it's upside down and backwards. So one side is going to be upside down and backwards, the other side is just going to be backwards. These, however, the inborn ones, work out fine. These are all the same size, so, and it's not like putting this on the inborn side of this one is not going to make it, you know, the text backwards, or same thing with putting it here. It's this is going to be backwards, and then it's going to be upside down and backwards. These two will work out, though. This is this is the correct. So I probably should have actually put the one that they say to put on the inside on the outside, so it would be correct. Of course, if I put it on this side, it's going to be upside down. So the text should be... It... it it's so that the, the decal is basically upside down. The the uh, part that should adhere is should be this side, and the part that should be facing outward should be the side that it adheres. So if you get this kit, keep that in mind. You're going to have backwards pendants. It's really microscopic text. I mean, unless you get really close on it, it's really hard to see. And. Yeah, you can see it's a pendant, and even right back here you can barely even see it. So, that's something to keep in mind. So this is all I have to do. I have to get my base sprue thing into the base over there, and then I'll be done. So, uh, more later. Well, here she is, all complete now. I am um, put the sprue in there again for... Uh, the base here, well, for the connector, just painted a sprue black, which makes it kind of wobbly. But it also means if it falls off the shelf, that that's going to break instead of the model. So, and it's not too heavy, so I'm not too worried. If that breaks, no problem. But there she is, all done, all decaled up, 
and looks pretty good, I think. Turned out pretty well. Um, biggest flaw, I think, are these impulse engines. I could have done a little bit better job on those. But overall, I don't think it's too bad. It was a fun little thing to build. I like all these 12500 scale. They were all fun to build. I actually got the detail on the uh, deflector dish there. She's got the gold detail as it bounces around. Um, I did, however, run out of my tester's uh, rattle can of uh, matte coat midway through this. I actually see if I can show this off where it stopped. There's a, it might be hard to see, but there's a little more of a sheen above that, that banner there on the secondary hull. You might be able to see. It's a little more shiny on the engineering hull there than on the uh, saucer section. And that's because uh, I ran out and I just used that matte varnish there. Which is, again, a really good satin varnish, but not a great matte varnish. I might just spray over this, buy some more tester clear and spray over it. Although I do like the effect on the on the Bassard collectors. I like those to be a little uh, a little more shiny. Same thing with the, the those blue parts. So yeah, a uh, fun little build, pretty easy. I uh, like all the 125th scale. Um, still not like a huge fan of the Sovereign. I don't know why it's so aerodynamic. Voyager was aerodynamic, but that's because it went into the atmosphere and made planet fall. Uh, never show the Sovereign class doing that, so I'm not sure why it doesn't have a neck. Maybe there's something out there in the fiction, but um, I'll be back in a second. I'll show off my my whole fleet here. Be back in a second. So here's my one twenty five hundred scale fleet. As you can see, got all of them from the, uh, the classic, all the way up to the E, and that's what I wanted with this scale. I just wanted a fleet of Enterprises, just showing the progression, uh, the design progression of the uh, TV show and movies. So. We have the original series A and the B. Um, these guys turned out okay. I really like the B. Even though I got some lifting on the decals here I have to fix, and on both of these I have to, but I really liked how detailed that one is. Of course, uh, those nacelles are really out of whack though. And so is the whole ship, actually, but it doesn't look bad from the top. So. Of course, my C, which turned out okay. Still, uh, some errors. Secondary hull doesn't look so bad. And uh, the D, which is probably my favorite out of all of these, it, that that turned out really well. It looks pretty, pretty neat, and it's done in the uh, colors of the model, the studio model, not the show. And the show was kind of a silvery gray, but the model. This is blue and multiple layers of blue. I'm not sure how it turned into gray. Same thing with the B. That turned it kind of grayish too. I'm not sure how. And of course the E. And uh, I really like the tester's rattle can dull coat. It looks really good. I might actually clean this, the D and the rest of these guys up and give them a shot of that tester's there because that looks really cool. And I can see, still see some shine on that hole, a little bit too shiny and some of the decals, I can see some spots with errors I have to fix still but all in all these are really all fun to build I know they make more uh, they make a a movie set with uh, the uh, A or refit there and then uh, the Miranda, the Reliant and uh, I believe a Cleon Battlecruiser I think they make another one with the uh, Bird of Prey and uh, the Battle Cruiser and a uh, uh, something else, maybe a Romulan and Klingon Bird of Prey. But yep, those were fun to build. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next, uh, but it will be uh, model related, hopefully, or scratch build. I'm not sure which. So, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll talk to everyone later.